good morning, New Bern, and welcome to This Week from City Hall. I'm Alderman Sabrina Bengal, and thank you for joining us for another wonderful edition of What We Do in New Bern and the people that we meet. And today, my guest is Captain Curtis Kratz from the Salvation Army. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, we're glad to have you. So I've got a wonderful list of questions for you. We're going to talk a little bit about um, what the Salvation Army does, what's your role in it, and how... Um, how important they are during the Christmas season. So tell us a little bit, you know, your title is Captain of the Salvation Army. Can you tell us about what you do and what it means to be a captain? Sure, sure. It's, a, it's an honor, obviously, to uh, be representing the Salvation Army. Um, you know, obviously it has a lot of roles. Um, one of our, our main functions is uh, both my wife and I are ordained ministers, and we, we preach every Sunday at 802 North Craven Street right down uh, you can go straight down Queen right over here, and, and we do that every Sunday. But we're also in charge of all the thrift stores in uh, Craven and uh, Pamlico County. So there's one in Havelock, there's one in New Bern, and uh, there's one in Alliance. And uh, we're in charge of those thrift stores. So, and then obviously we have to be in charge of the finances, and uh, you know we, we, we have a whole lot of stuff going on. And so there's uh, a lot of times I say we're kind of like an executive director, a pastor, uh, a CEO of our organization all kind of wrapped up in one so it keeps us fairly busy and can you tell me you know what led you to this journey um well uh my family has ties to the Salvation Army since birth I didn't really grow up going to the Salvation Army but my grandparents did and so I'm kind of one of those people who's a little reversed than most people I used to go to Panama City Florida when we visit my grandparents and would um go to church there. That's all I knew they were. I thought they were a church that just played brass instruments. <laughs> I didn't know they did kettles. I didn't know they did social services. Uh, and then I grew up, you know, learned a little bit more, uh, you know, went to high school and then I went to college and got a job uh, with my uncle for an internship for, uh, you know, ministry. I had no interest in joining the Salvation Army. But when I was down there in Fort Myers, Florida, um, some guy called me to work in Danville, Virginia, and kind of, I would like to say the rest is history. You know, I got connected with with the Army, uh, went to training to become an officer, and there that's what happened. My journey then, of course, has taken me uh, many places. My journey has taken me uh, to uh, McKinney, Texas, to Plainview, Texas, uh, where my beautiful daughter Emma was born. She turned 11 yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And then Asheboro, North Carolina, and I don't know, I, I, and I know this is not what this interview is about, but if you've never been to that state zoo, you need to go to it. It's one of the best, not in the nation, period. And uh, we got to spend four years there. And then, of course, uh, I know many people don't know about this community, but I spent five years in Kinston, and it's a lovely place. And then obviously, we've had the honor of coming to New Bern. A fun fact, me and my wife did our honeymoon in New Bern. Ah, see, what goes yeah. around comes around. It does, well, yes. it's a great place to be. So tell me, what roles do the area churches play in Salvation Army? You know, again, Salvation Army is, in essence, a church. It is, um, but every church plays a pivotal role in serving the community. Every church should be behind our mission statement to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. So the churches are, uh, without a doubt, one of our biggest supporters. They help us with funding. They help us through prayer. They help us through different programs that we have, through, whether it be through Angel Tree, whether it be through uh, volunteering at Kettles, whether it be allowing us to kind of say, hey, here are some programs and here are some needs, and, and they always step up. Churches are uh, really the backbone. The faith-based community is really the backbone of the community. And I know there are people who are not of faith who would say, well, I do things, and we appreciate that. Uh, but they do a lot of things, and they have a lot of networks. It's, it's one of the greatest um, social networks ever because you can physically see people. Right. Oh, well, that's awesome. So give me, what, what would you say is the best example of the Salvation Army's mission that you have seen portrayed here in Craven County? Um, I, I've stated it before, but I think when um, Florence hit, you know, we had just been here just a few months and, and uh, just watching the outpouring and just how well organized this community was and, and how people came together and, and really said, we're going to meet the needs of the people who are hurting. And they did it fast. They did it quick. They're continuing to do it now. Um, but also I've seen it in, in smaller ways when people have needed help or, hey, I, I, this guy needs a jacket or, hey, this person needs some food. Can we take it? So there's, there's a lot of that happening that it's not quite as big as Florence was when you were seeing the needs being met, but it's, it's, it's very vital. that right. you And you all were very things. visible. Um, you know, I actually met, you know, some people in command and whatever because they were pretty uh, quick to respond they were. Um, to the disaster and the needs of people, feeding them clothing, trying to help with shelter in some cases. So it was pretty 
a, an amazing feat and um, that was a good portrayal of what you really do. Now, we, we've talked a little bit about, you know, who you are, what the Salvation Army does, but one thing that I think most people in our city, and I'm sure in our county, associate the Salvation Army with is Christmas time. And that's um, the bell ringing, the empty stocking fund, the angel tree. So first of all, can you tell us about the angel tree program? Yeah, the angel tree program, um, God has blessed us in New Bern. I mean, we've had a great success with that program. It's, it's a, a pretty simple program. Someone comes in and says, hey, I, I'm gonna need help with Christmas. We've already done our applications for the year. And, and we go through the process. We make sure that they're in need. Uh, you know, our big thing is to always make sure that the kid is living with them. That's our big thing. Everything else is really minor um, after that. Is a kid actually staying with you? And then um, what we do is we then uh, print out angels. We put them on trees or give them to donors. And donors then go out and shop for those kids. And then we have a distribution date, which I believe is the 18th of December. And we distribute to those families. Um, and this year we'll actually be at the Mason Lodge on Hancock on that day. So if you'd have any interest or kind of seeing how it works, uh, you're more than welcome to come. So um, if you're in need or you feel your child's in need of this assistance, should can you still apply for it? Yeah, if you really feel like it's an emergency. Now, obviously, we've gone through the application process, but, you know, obviously we continue to do it because we're blessed. And if you're like, oh, my gosh, I missed the deadline. How am I going to get my kid help for Christmas? You can always come. Okay, so that's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, we're talking about how the Salvation Army can help during the holidays. So, um, you know, one of the things is you have to raise money. So oh, yeah. with that, um, bell ringers, we know, are often seen at storefronts around the holidays. What is the history of the practice of the bell ringers? Well, long ago, there was a guy in uh, San Francisco um, who needed to raise some money for uh, a holiday meal. And he got out this big kettle pot and went out onto the street and started ringing. You know, he didn't bother to ask for permission or anything. <laughs> he just, just kind of did it. You know, the world's a lot different than when he did it. I, he may have even gotten a little bit of trouble, but they put money in the pot so that he could help uh, feed people who needed food. And so obviously it's transformed over the years. Uh, in a lot of places, we have to pay bell ringers in order to just to be able to raise the money. You're right. You need to have money. It's what has to happen in order for us to help somebody. We have to have either the the um, gift in kind or the money to pay for for those things and uh, so anyways that's what we've been doing and in New Bern we're blessed with with all volunteers we actually have a, a unique thing we're doing on December 6th with um, the three corners and uh, obviously you're aware of that and thank I, you very I, much well, for that we're glad uh, yeah. what he's talking about the birthplace of Pepsi will be um, having a bell ringer on our corner, and I believe you'll be across the street at the First Baptist Church corner. Well, I can tell you we'll be at okay. the Pepsi, and okay. we'll be at Mitchell's Hardware, and we'll be sure. at um, Captain Ratty's from 11 okay, to 2. Okay, those three corners. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we were thinking about Chelsea's, but we're like, Chelsea's, and it, it, they're literally across the street from each other. So if you're over at the Chelsea, you can walk across the street and definitely... Uh, donating the Pepsi can. Well, I mean, they're down the street, yeah. diagonals, but you may want to talk to them about that because it would be good to have them so that you're really um, taking care of all the corners because they're the 300 block, we're the 200 block. Gotcha. But we're, we're happy to have them there. And where else throughout the city do you have bell ringers? Station? We have uh, the Walmarts um, and then the Harris Teeter and the Belk and the J.C. Penney. They've all uh, uh, agreed to uh, allow us to use their spot in the Hobby Lobby. I hope I didn't miss the location. We mm -hmm. have about 14 spots in Craven and Pamlico counties. Um, well, that's pretty awesome. And, you know, people, you could just see the warmth of the season, too, because people, I'm always seeing walking by, putting in change, putting in dollar bills. And, and a lot of the times your volunteers, I know I was a member of Breakfast Rotary, and our group would always volunteer to take a time yes. to do some bell ringing. And I think that's great to see a lot of our um, nonprofit organizations and our service organizations getting out there ringing the bell. Yes, ma'am. And so um, how can somebody, if, you know, if there's somebody out there who's seeing this and say, you know, I would really like to do that. How do they go about being a bell ringer? They can, uh, the simplest thing is just to call. Um, and all they have to do is dial a 252-670-6274 and ask to speak with uh, Chuck. But, you know, obviously there's a lot of phone calls coming to him. If that doesn't work, you can call my office at 252-637-2277, extension 203. Uh, we ring uh, Monday through Friday from 10 to 6. Um, and we tend to encourage, now groups, obviously, if you're a, 
a group like the Breakfast Rotary, we'd encourage you to do the whole day. But if you're an individual, we encourage you to try to pick like a two hour slot, 10 to 12, two to four, four to six. Right. Yeah. So you're not killing yourself all day. <laughs> now I spend the time, I always go out once a year and ring from 10 to four, me personally, because I feel like I can do that. And I enjoy going out and playing my cornet at some of these locations. But obviously any volunteer in any hours they give us, we're, we're appreciative. Right. So how does the salvation help out those in need during the holidays besides, you know, what specifically we talked about the angel tree. Of course, we talked about ringing the bell so that we can get the money. But what other services? Do well, we provide, provide rent and utilities all year long, all year long. And a lot of that money we raise, we tend to utilize to help those people up until uh, this year. Recently, we weren't getting funding from any other sources. So what we raise in kettles and the empty stocking fund mm -hmm. that would help people throughout the year with rent, utilities, uh, sometimes purchasing food to help. Now we're blessed, obviously, with people donating non-perishable goods to us and we get perishable foods from Foodline. But uh, we we utilize that money really to, to help people with lots of needs. And, and if we feel we can meet the need, we we utilize it. Well, that's that's pretty awesome. So, what other ways can the community help you um, during this season? Well, outside of volunteering, uh, they can give. One of the things that uh, at the kettle sites that we will have at several locations now is a kettle pay thing. So, if, you know, you go, oh, I don't have cash. You know, you can swipe on a ah, kettle pay thing with your so phone. You're in the, you're in you the can new swipe century. on your kettle pay thing with your phone. Uh, now, older phones, you've got to, it's a little tricky, obviously, and we'll have some instructions, but the kettle pay is going to be a, a good program. Um, when you go to it, now I will say this if you're from out of town, it will go to whatever town you're from because they haven't been able to set that up. Right. But um, obviously, you can donate, um, you can pray, you can see uh, what times you can volunteer. Maybe you, you have an opportunity to volunteer at one of our stores. A lot of people forget we have those stores, and when we raise that money at those stores, the extra money we get then gets allocated back to where we can then use that money to help people in need. Well, and that, that's really important because uh, as a person in service myself, um, I do encounter a lot of people in need, and sometimes it is for that utility bill, or they can't meet the rent, or they can't buy groceries that week, and it's good to know that Salvation offers that service for people who are in need. We do, and we all we always, and, and I always say this, a lot of people go, well, you're just enabling them. No, we, we, we make sure, we want to empower them. When we want to help them. We want to get them out of that circumstance. We want to make sure that they're, they're growing forward and not just going, well, this is just some thing I need to have this month and I'm going to go to this agency next month, but rather say, how can we get you out of this situation? How can we find you a place to where you can be gainfully employed so you can get this? How can we help you? You know, we, we deal with situations a lot. Um, you know, right now we're dealing with a situation where we, we can't meet the need of, of, of a certain bill because it's a it's, it's, a, it's a very odd situation, but we're like, how can we help you? Um, and what suggestions can we give? We may not be able to actually give you the money, but let's give you the suggestion to see if this can help or you. Or point them to another agency that might could help yeah. them. Yeah, we, we encounter that a lot. Well, um, I just want to thank you so much for being with me today. And I just want to remind everybody that this is the season of giving. We're getting ready to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving and very thankful that we live in a community that is blessed with a lot of volunteers. I, I talk about the treasures of Newburn, and it's um, more than money sometimes. It's just the, the treasure of people um, giving of themselves and um, of their their financial treasure. So I'm just really fortunate that we live in this great community. Uh, we're coming up on the Christmas season. Every time you see those bell ringers, know that you're really helping to take care of the needs of the citizens in Craven County the Angel Tree Program, all the good things we've talked about today. But if you're in just need of a spiritual home, I'm sure um, Captain Kratz would love to see you on Sunday morning. What time are your services? Uh, Sunday school's at 9.45. Uh, Sunday, obviously Sunday school Sunday, uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday for our holiness meeting, which is the worship meeting. And then on uh, Monday nights, we have youth programs uh, for kindergarten to um, forever, I guess, uh, at, at, <laughs> at 545. And then on Wednesday nights, uh, we have a Bible study at six o'clock and we'd love to have you. And obviously if you're in any band or you want to play brass instruments, we do have band and we do 530. So there's that that's, as well. That's awesome. Lots of opportunities. Yeah. So again, this is Alderman Sabrina Bengal. It's this week at City Hall with my guest, Captain Curtis Scratch from the Salvation, of, Salvation Army. I hope everybody has a Wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving and a merry, merry Christmas and happy new year. Thank you.